In this video, I'm going to show you how I converted a highly customized Emperor's Children Warband by mixing Chaos Space Marine and Horus Heresy Emperor's Children bits together, along with a couple other odds and ends I found in my bits box. The first member of the kill team I tackled was just a generic bolt pistol and close combat weapon guy. To start with, I wanted to give this model an exposed midsection, as I've always thought it was a cool element from this picture of an Emperor's Children champion in a 3.5 Chaos Codex. For some unknown reason, I had a bunch of unbuilt Warhammer Fantasy Ungor models laying around, and these seemed to be the perfect size for the Marine's torso. The Ungor's torso and legs come intact though, so I started off by sawing them apart using a jeweler saw, as I wanted to potentially save the legs for a future project and didn't want to hack them apart with my clippers. But once I had the torso on its own, I quickly devolved into cutting away large chunks of plastic with both my hobby knife and my clippers until I had just the abdomen section by itself. Once the chest was roughly the size I wanted it to be, I needed to cut away the abdomen portion of the power armor, as well as trim down some of the interior plastic so that the Beastman torso would fit snugly. When doing this trimming, I made sure to frequently check the fit of the torso into the armor rib cage to make sure it still looked good and I wasn't cutting away too much. This is a very iterative process and I would highly recommend you take your time here and make a couple small cuts, test the fit, and then adjust your cuts again, as otherwise you run the risk of cutting away way too much of the torso you're looking to save. This is a pretty small detail and there's probably a good chance that most people overlook it, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and it captures that slaneshi weirdness that I'm going for with this warband. So I'm pretty happy with it, and that's all that really matters. For the head, I started off with this respirator head from the Space Marine Tactical Squad, as I thought it was the perfect starting point for some paint huffing loomies, and all I really did to push it into the weird territory was drill out the eyes and replace them with these rivets from Zinj Industries. I imagine that this marine replaces his eyes with some sort of multi-spectrum viewing augments to heighten his available visual experiences, and just, uh, see the world in a little more slaneshi friendly way. Also, it just looks weird and creepy, which is perfect for what I'm going for with these models. Continuing the trend of weirdness on this guy, I decided to replace his chainsword with a weapon from the Warcry Untamed Beast Kit. It might seem a bit strange that I decided to use a weapon made of bone for the Astartes, but the odd shapes or organic elements of this weapon I think add to the overall creepiness factor of the model. I'm also a huge fan of both the Realm of Chaos and Liber Chaotica books, which represent demon weapons as more organic and, well, just more chaotic than we normally see on the tabletop. So I figured that a warband stuck in a demon world would either pick up weapons that were more crafted in their god's image, or try to make their own weapons match the demon weapons they're trying to, I guess, acquire. I did run into a bit of a challenge with the shoulder pads, though, as I didn't want to simply use the Chaos Space Marine ones as I just feel they're too generically chaos and not slanesh enough for what I'm going for. There is, of course, nothing wrong with using them, but I wanted to really up the Baroque weirdness of these models, so I decided to start off with some blank Mark VI shoulder pads from the new kit, as they provide the perfect canvas to build off of. For the first shoulder pad, I cut up the right arm from the Eidolon model and took the wing off of it. I also used the screaming head from the Palatine Blade kit and merge them together to create a screaming winged face. There was quite a bit of careful cutting here, and if you are going to try to reproduce something similar yourself, I'd highly recommend that you use a very sharp knife and make small deliberate cuts to shave away both resin and plastic. It's really easy to get carried away here going too fast, and ruin an expensive bit because of impatience. The other shoulder pad also started off as a blank Mark VI one, which I then used some green stuff to sculpt some cloth hanging off of it almost like a veil. This was a little tricky to do, but I started off by taking a blob of green stuff roughly in the shape of the cloth I wanted, and prodded and poked at it with clay color shapers until it looked like the shape of the hanging cloth I was going for. One thing I really struggled with sculpting this fabric was getting it to look like it was hanging correctly and gravity was impacting it as it should. It took me a couple of tries to get it right. One thing that really helped me through this process though was to think through how the fabric was attached to the shoulder pad, in this case with rivets, and how gravity would naturally pull it down based on the marine's pose. Moving on to the next member of my merry band of hedonists, I wanted to have a dude armed with a bolter, but wanted something a little more special than just a standard Chaos Space Marine model out of the plastic kit. So I decided to use a resin body from the Forge Work Cacophony kit 
is they're probably some of my favorite Emperor's Children models in either 30k or 40k, and I feel that they strike a nice balance between the artistic perfection and beauty of the pre-fall Third Legion and the insanity that they turned into after the Cleansing Fires of Istvan III. I did run into a bit of an issue here though, where the bolter arms from the plastic kit didn't quite line up with the resin body that I wanted to use. So I had to get a bit creative by cutting off the left arm at the elbow and reassembling it to get everything to go together correctly. This did leave me though with a little bit of a gap at the elbow that was easily fixed with some rough sculpting of this flexible ribbing using green stuff, my sculpting tool, and some silicone clay shapers. I was a little bit sloppy here as my plan was to cover this up with an embellished shoulder pad, which I made by taking a blank Mark VI plastic Space Marine shoulder pad and combined it with the eagle head from Eidolon's shoulder pad I used previously, along with some of this resin tubing to create this weird kind of mockery of the Imperial Eagle over the shoulder pad. To finish off this model, all I did then was use some green stuff to blend these tubes into the shoulder pad to get a little more finished appearance. If you have seen my video on how to model Vexillas for Horus Heresy Tactical Squads, you'll know that I prefer to have my banners and icons be held in my marines' hands as opposed to strapped onto their backpacks, and the icon bearer for this kill team is no different. I started off using a cacophony body again, and had one of the bare right arms and hands from the World Eater's Rampager Squad. I chose this arm and hand combination as it allowed me to have the arm angled up in the air holding the icon, which gave the marine a much more dynamic pose than if you were just holding it out in front of him. The banner pull was made out of some 1.5mm brass rod drilled through the hand, which was then attached to the 3rd Legion icon from Fulgrim's base. I wanted to do a little more for this icon though, so I added some leather straps as they just seemed so appropriate for the fallen 3rd Legion. These were made by cutting some plastic card strips to length and super gluing them onto the back of the icon. This part was a little bit tricky to get glued correctly, as there wasn't a ton of contact area, but I found that by gluing both the top of the strips to the icon's crossbar, as well as the point that the plastic card hit the laurel, I was able to get a firm bond. In order to really push the detailing on the banner though, I decided to add some Emperor's Children icons taken from the Fulgrim model, as well as some studs which I cut off the Mark VI shoulder pads I was using before. It was a bit of a pain working with these small details, but I do think it's worth it as they visually transform these pieces of plastic card into something that reads, well, I think more as detailing on a banner, whereas the plastic card before was just too flat and plain. I recently did a video sharing some of the tips and tricks I used to work with these very small bits, and you can find that video linked in the upper right hand corner. The rest of the model was finished off by adding an arm from the Imperial Fist Legion Command Kit, alongside a simple Charnable Saber. I originally tried to do some sort of weird decapitated head sonic weapon thingy, but eventually tossed out the idea as I felt the model already had enough going on with the icon, and I didn't want other details to distract from that. The last two members of this warband were pretty simple kit patches. It felt that the sonic weapons were already eye-catching enough, and the models didn't need too much more work beyond that. Both these models used the sonic weapons from the Noise Marine Upgrade Kit, with the first one using a Palantine Blade body with a helmet from the Angel's Tear Kit, and the second one was done with a Palantine Blade helmet with a normal Chaos Space Marine body. I also made a champion for this squad that I think is really cool, but somehow I managed to lose all of my video of me converting him. So I figured I'd just quickly show him off here, and I'll list out the bits used down below in the description if anyone's interested. But overall, it's a Chaos Space Marine body mixed in with a bare torso from the Untamed Beast kit I used before, with a sculpted on cape and a tentacle from the old Chaos Mutation sprue. With that though, my six-man kill team is completed, and I'm really happy with how these models turned out. They're not quite the full-blown Emperor Children Marines we're used to see in 40k, but they're not as clean cut and, well, pure as they would be at the start of the Horus Heresy. Instead, they're a nice blend of the two that I think is perfect for either the scouring or late heresy aesthetic for your Emperor's Children. I did a Chaos Lord for this warband as well, and I'll be showing off my conversion process in my next video, along with how I will be painting these models and how I base them. I'm going to try to get this video out next week, but I'm finding it rather difficult to maintain a pace of a weekly video when doing these more involved conversions, such as this squad, so I might change up my posting frequency a bit. Also, it's getting kind of expensive coming up with these conversions week over week. These six models alone are made up of over $100 worth of bits and kits. I'm also really trying to keep ads and completely irrelevant sponsorships off this channel, 
is I have no desire to speak about Rage Shadow Legends ever outside of this sentence right here. But I do need to find some way to offset my cost a bit. So I wanted to pose to you all still watching at this point. Would anyone be interested in actually sponsoring your video? The details are still kind of hazy and we'll have to work them out with you. But I was thinking something along the lines of a commission conversion or paint job that also gets turned into a video with credits given to the sponsor, of course. If this is something you think you're interested in, please reach out to me either over Instagram or my email, both of which will be linked in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and hobby on.